I stumbled across an essay about three or four years ago that was about the history of uh, black serial killers. And then I came up with this character named Paul Pear Jr. I wanted to write a morality play about lying. And then morality grew into a larger theme for me because I'm, I'm an atheist and I'm a relativist. I started writing the play because I was thinking about addiction, how almost everybody I knew had some kind of compulsive um, behavior. I guess it got me thinking um, in a big way about kind of our culture and how it's set up to inflame people's desires and make people want things that they can't have or don't have. I can just say that this is a play that I've been working on for two to three years. For me, I remember it was a huge, huge exciting deal because it felt like finally someone believed in me and believed in this play. For me, it was the opposite in the sense that this is like a brand new first draft and I was I had just had a reading of it and then I got a call from Steppenwolf and I thought like, I mean it was exciting and I also thought, well at least this means that like, this play will, you know, I'll have to work on it. My play started out as a one act um, that I had written while I was in school and uh, Steppenwolf got a hold of the first, uh, the one act version and they called me and was like, you know, are you still interested in doing the full length? And I was like, yes. And they were like, well, you know, we would like to include it in the festival. When, when do you think you can get this done? And I was like, whenever you need it. <laughs> a lot of times you'll be tinkering with one thing and it will accidentally change the tone of the play or just like twist the play a little. Um, but here you, it feels like you have way more of a green light to go ahead and make a mess. Mm -hmm. And the actors are ex not just you know, willing but excited to, to, to see what the process is like. Mm -hmm. I changed the, the last scene pretty dramatically, yeah. but left the first half of the play, you know, fairly untouched. Yeah. But then at one point during rehearsal, we were kind of going through it and realizing that like with the new ending, it was a different, I mean, the play was about something else. Yeah. So Kimberly literally had to say to the actors like two weeks in, I want to expire all the notes that yeah. we gave yeah. in the first week because they no longer apply to the play we're doing yeah. now. It is interesting because I do feel like you know, after this experience, like I'm still gonna keep working on the play, but I've gotten closer to its yeah. ideal state. Yeah, yeah. And the success for me is just getting another person who's like interested in my yeah. work. Uh, and, and it really is about like cultivating an audience um, and, and having people like understand the work that I'm trying to do and then hopefully have a, a conversation with me via the work. Um, so in a totally hippy dippy way, it's just about like getting two or three more people who live in Chicago, who may yeah. see my name, next time knock on wood on something and they'll come just to see it and continue the conversation. Um, so to me, like that's the success.